Technical head Ecolab India, Ecolab USA are the global, global leaders in the manufacture of high tech specialty cleaning and sanitizing chemicals for institutional applications for laundries, housekeeping, food and beverage production and service, hospitals. Laundries include those in hotels and hospitals. So now I call upon Mr. Uh, Vivek Kulkarni to take over the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for inviting me to the session. Uh, okay. Am I audible and uh, visible both? Yes, sir. You are audible and both visible. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I can see the screen now. Okay. So, uh, thanks very much. And uh, I'm a very, very honored and privileged to be a part of this uh, very important session. And in fact, the uh, topic covered is very relevant. Uh, sustainability in hospital laundries. Next slide, please. As one can see, it's a very vast subject. So I have tried to sort of, you know, condense the uh, big topic in a few slides here, uh, covering the absolute fundamental basics. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, what is sustainability? As we all know, in the case of the laundry also, the basic parameters will remain the same. The entire laundry practice should not cause any harm to the environment. Now, environment will include, for example, the ozone layer, soil, water bodies, air, flora, and fauna. It should preferably promote the use of resources of non-renewable energy should be minimized, and renewable energy sources should be promoted to the maximum permissible extent. And non-renewable depleting natural resources like petroleum sources, gas or coal, etc., they should be used optimally. Of course, water conservation is a very important topic in laundry because laundry is a very water-intensive uh, process. And above all, the entire process should be safe to human health. Okay, we can move on, please. Now, what are the two important aspects in a laundry? First is the textiles that are being washed. And the second is the processes employed there into. Next slide, please. Now we can all imagine that a laundry would not have much choice in what it has to clean, you know, what textiles it has to clean. Hospitals will just go on giving textiles to it, infected, non-infected, whatever it is. And the laundry has to do the job. So in terms of textiles, there, there is hardly any choice. All the uh, maneuvering, manipulation, whatever it is, management has to be done in the processes itself. And hospital textile sustainability, that itself is a equally big parallel topic or different topic altogether. So in this particular presentation, we will cover the sustainability in the existing laundry processes. Now, what are the important parameters? We can all... Uh, we use our basic uh, this thing, you know, knowledge of uh, physics, chemistry, and my, uh, basic sciences. Chemicals will be important. Even at home, we use different types of chemicals, detergents, bleaches, etc. Time, temperature, and mechanical action. So even in a domestic law, textile washing process, these four parameters are equally important. And now we are talking about laundries on a very big scale, industrial scale. So obviously, these four parameters will assume very crucial importance. We can move on, please. Now, what are the chemicals used in the laundry? Broadly, the most important chemical, as we can all see, is a detergent. Now, since it's a hospital laundry, we can definitely imagine it will be using disinfecting and antibacterial agents. There are, of course, alkalis, 
bleaches now if there are alkalis neutralization is carried out by acids so there are acids there are textile softeners and of course there are dry cleaning chemicals and some of these chemicals may be a mixture of different individual chemicals for example a detergent uh, has at least seven or eight different ingredients mixed in different proportions so that becomes a detergent mixture okay we can move on please now laundry chemicals understandably have to be eco friendly and of course at the same time they have to be safe to human health also now again it's a very broad subject and covering it in detail may not be within the scope of this particular presentation but we will uh, cover some of the very important uh, aspects which are important from the contemporary point of view now detergent should not contain phosphates for example like even domestic detergents are being regulated in this manner that they have to be phosphate free now why they have to be phosphate free we all know you know it disturbs the water bodies and the oxygen balance vegetation etc so detergent should absolutely be phosphate free that's a very important criteria detergent based on alkyl phenols now if we go back to basic uh, 10th or 12th or even college level chemistry phenol is based on a very harmful chemical called benzene now benzene itself is a confirmed carcinogen according to the who and uh, certain manipulations can be done on this molecule and a detergent can be manufactured out of this particular genre of chemicals which is called the alkyl phenols now a lot of research has been done and they have been banned in at least 35 countries across the world including the 27 countries of the eu european union so these are water pollutants and they are also human health hazards now certain compounds like formaldehyde butyl compounds are gradually being phased out of the laundry of course in some of the advanced countries they are already banned a very important aspect in the laundry is dry cleaning as we know certain specialty wool and silk articles they are not generally cleaned with water they are cleaned with a special solvent called perchloroethylene it's also called iupac name is tetrachloroethylene c2cl4 so this is a very major hazard it's an environmental pollutant and now more and more research being conducted here is uh bringing out the fact that it might be a suspected carcinogen so a new technology has been developed to uh, replace perk with better chemicals and better machinery and of course research is still continuously going on so that process definitely is eco friendly and that should be encouraged and promoted as much as possible uh chlorine bleach is quite common popular because of its low cost and easy availability but then of course it comes with the side effects it can be health hazardous if not used wisely so now gradually replacements are coming and chlorine bleach is also is being sort of you know phased out for uh, to make way for better uh, bleaching agents next slide please now the typical steps in a wash process as in a domestic 5 kg or 8 kg washing machine at home we say is there is a pre wash we also call it a flush then there is a main wash which actually carries out the washing and the disinfection then there is whitening and stain removal using bleaches as we can understand then there is a very important step called disinfection then there is a step called neutralization the alkalis are added during the main wash so to neutralize them acids are added that is called neutralization or souring for towels as we are, we can all imagine towels come into direct contact with the body for wiping etc so softness is very important so if there is a broad a very wide generation of uh, sorry genre of chemicals called softeners and so softening is carried out and of course in between again i am emphasizing the same thing as in a domestic washing cycle there are rinses in between next slide please now all uh, if we go through the previous steps we all see that water is essential for all these steps whatever steps have been mentioned in the previous slide water is an absolutely mandatory ingredient in all of them now we all know water has become a very precious natural resource now so the worldwide water awareness is really thankfully increasing and water conservation is being definitely given, being given due importance 
now uh, as we said every chemical processing step mentioned in the previous slide water is essential domestic machine also you must have seen there are different water levels to choose at the beginning the difference here and in the domestic washing cycle is in a domestic washing cycle typically once you select the water level it remains constant throughout the entire washing process which may last about 45 to 50 minutes unlike that in an industrial laundry used in a hospital different steps which i have mentioned in the previous step oh sorry previous slide they need different quantities of water so this is done to promote optimum use of water so that water is not wasted and uh, of course over the years lot of studies have been done theoretical as well as empirical and over the uh, by seeing the results water level required for each step have been more or less now standardized <clears throat> for example <clears throat> if there is a load of 100 kilos how much water should be required for step 1 how much for step 2 etc and that is being followed now and of course always experimentation is going on to see whether any particular step can work better with reduced quantities of water but of course certain minimum quantity of water is essential as we can all imagine that and uh, so adequate quantity of this thing we have to use the bare minimum but of course excess should always be avoided next slide please now water in a laundry has to conform to very stringent quality standards on certain parameters like uh, color odor clarity ph hardness tds heavy metal content and of course it has to be completely free from pathogens like e coli and coliforms now if we go through the bis standard for drinking water is 10500 the latest edition i think 2010 or something if we keep them side by side of course it's too deep a topic Uh, that's why i am not uh, able to discuss it here but it's sufficient to say that on many many of these parameters laundry water is much purer than even drinking water drinking water has a much broader allowance for certain factors but laundry water cannot allow that degree of sort of you know tolerance level or allowance level so compromise just cannot be accepted because compromise means if certain factors are below par that means you will have to use more water and even more chemicals both of which prevent the process from being sustainable so to ensure that chemicals are used in the optimal quantity water is used in the optimal quantity quality of feed water is very very vital to ensure sustainability next slide please now uh, we can all imagine that after every step water has to be drained out from that particular step now every step will employ certain mixture of chemicals and when it is drained out the same chemicals will be there or of course there will be some additional uh, uh material in that effluent drain liquor soils will be going out infections will be going out bacteria dead bacteria reaction products so there will be a wide variety of entities present in the water being drained out now of course these are all potentially dangerous substances harmful it can be infectious also so these have to be treated in a what we know commonly as the etp effluent treatment plant now when the water effluent is treated in the treatment plant isolation is done in two parts sludge the solid waste material and this sludge is isolated and disposed of as per the existing government regulations and the treated recovered water can be used for multiple purposes for example gardening cleaning cars flushing uh, toilet flushing etc and properly treated etp water can also be recycled into certain steps of a laundry of course not in all because certain steps can have a broad allowance for quality certain cannot so it can be recycled to the laundry itself so it's a sort of a you know, self sustained this thing right you may be using say 100 liters out of which 80 liters are being recovered and reused and recycled so next slide please so this is what a typical etp looks like effluent treatment plant looks like you know that all this water is being treated but of course etp is a different technology altogether it's a complete science it's a full topic by itself you know okay we can move on please 
ETP, in addition to maintaining hygiene, ETP also sort of you know contribution to saving of water, which is a very precious, precious vital natural resource. So ETP contributes towards water conservation. Next slide, please. So the mantra is RRR, reduce, reuse, recycle, which is very commonly sort of you know like accepted and implementation is also being done now. Next slide, please. Now, time is a very important aspect. Again, as it is the case with water level, a lot of uh, theoretical and empirical studies have been done and steps required for each, well, sorry, time required for each of the steps, which I mentioned in the previous slide, have been studied and standardized. And those are being followed uh, very scrupulously these days. Of course, certain minimum duration of a process is essential, but it should not be stretched beyond the limit, you know, because we can all say, Time increase means lower productivity, wastage of electricity, etc. Because generation of electric power is a very important eco-related issue. Next slide, please. Temperature is a very important laundry parameter. Everything, many processes are required, carried out at higher temperatures. And water heating, we all know, is quite energy intensive. If you go back to seventh level physics, thermal science, Water has the highest amount of specific heat. So heating water is very hard on energy. So we have to see that this has to be covered in very, very proper way. Next slide, please. So now I think we can quickly glance through uh, that water, sorry, temperature is carried out in either steam, electricity, or PNG. Heating can be uh, carried out in these three different modes of heating. And in India, steam is the most common mode of heating. Next, please. Now, water is boiled. We all know if to generate steam, boilers are used. Water is put in the boiler. Fuel is used to heat that uh, this thing, water. Now, what are the fuels? Diesel and uh, furnace oil. They all have their harmful side effects. So alternatives include PNG. It is, promote, is being promoted very highly because of a lot of advantages lower on pollution, lower on greenhouse emission gases, and of course, higher calorific value, so lower cost of steam generation also. Next slide, please. Uh, some more boiler fuels are also being used, but they should be completely phased out to sustain eco uh, sustainability. Coal and pet coke, there are lots of disadvantage. So uh, they should be sort of, you know, minimize or at least if possible phased out completely over there are health hazards of course and there are water uh, air pollutants wood is also being used as a boiler fuel surprisingly and it should be banned forthwith it's becoming increasingly popular and which should be promoted is briquettes now for example like food waste you know bio waste agro waste forest waste all these are collected together and they are compressed, dehydrated and solidified in, of course, there is a complete technology behind this and they are uh, pressed in the form of cakes, which are called briquettes. And this is, as I have written in a slide, it's literally an example of waste converting to wealth. And now this is a renewable energy source, which is quite economical, very price uh, effective also. And of course it promotes sustainability in a big way. So this is gaining popularity and a lot of efforts is going on currently to increase the popularity of this. And whoever is in the, engaged in this business should promote brickwits to promote sustainability. Next slide, please. Electricity in India is high on CAPEX and OPEX, capital expenditure, machinery is expensive, operational expenditure is, exp is also very high because India, as we all know, is not a power surplus country. Europe, Western Europe, especially being power surplus, they are using it. So for them, electrical heating is sustainable. For India, it is not. Next slide, please. PNG for water heating, some or other, the technology has not been developed. It is, of course, research is being carried out. And it, when it becomes sustainable, we can possibly think of doing it. But right now, it is in the, the experimental stage. Next slide, please. Now, of course, after washing, there are processes like drying, drying come ironing or drying or different, uh, depending on the types of textiles being used. So the slide is self-explanatory. Next slide, please. Drying, 
because we all know productivity is uh, demands are very high so obviously we cannot put them on items can be pulled uh, put on air drying or strings so it has to be uh, dried in specifically designed machine called dryers and this temperature is carried with hot air at about 80 celsius so heating is again essential here next slide please as we all know ironing even at home and also in the industrial laundries ironing requires heat and in industrial laundries the heat ranges from 80 celsius to 180 celsius using steam or hot metal next slide please now we can all see that all the operations you know drying and ironing they all require heat now as in the case of generating steam with water again there are three different methods steam electricity and png pipe natural gas for heating next slide please now heating with steam again is quite popular in india for certain types of ironing equipment in fact the majority of a majority of ironing equipment steam is the only possible way of heating so steam generation has to be made sustainable as we have seen in the previous slides when we covered water heating in a boiler and certain uh, as okay applicable for okay so whatever we have seen about that is applicable here also next slide please now drying and ironing heating with electricity again in india it is not sustainable for the same reasons as we have seen in the previous slides india is not a power surplus country next slide please Yeah, can we move to the next slide? No, the previous one we have not covered yet. I think we have jumped one slide. Or oh, the can we go to the immediate previous one again? The one before this. Okay, yeah. Now the next one, PNG. Yeah, here unlike water heating, drying and ironing using machines with pipe natural gas is very. feasible it is very economical it's a very sustainable technique and it is being increasingly adopted in progressive dynamic and sort of in the laundries which are aware of this so heating with png for drying and ironing is very very crucial so many laundries now are phasing out steam heating and electrical heating and they are now resorting to png heating next slide please so we have covered the if you go to slide number 6 we have covered the first three parameters name the chemicals time and temperature and we can all see mechanical action does not have too much of a significant bearing on sustainability whatever has been fed into the machine is uh, it's pre programmed you know? next slide please yeah very important aspect is as we come to the close of this particular presentation machinery is very very crucially important you know and unfortunately many laundries tend to overlook this improperly maintained machinery can be very unsustainability not only for the laundry owner but also for the environment because as we have seen here we can see improperly maintained machinery means chemicals are wasted water is wasted steam is wasted electricity wasted and increased time means lower productivity so all completely destroy sustainability so equipment based on modern technology has been sort of you know like brought in which increase and promote sustainability but of course once you have acquired this new modern technology machines it does not end there preventive maintenance and continuous servicing is very much essential even for the current state of the art equipment also to ensure that the process remains sustainable over their life span and sops have to be uh, of course there is a full broad range of sops to be followed in the laundry but i am focusing on one important aspect which is easy to <coughs> sort of you know like uh, understand <coughs> uh if you can go to the next slide i will show you a picture there is a dryer can we go to the next slide please this is a what a typical dryer in an industrial laundry looks like now if we look at the bottom there is a lid blue colored lid and we can see a small white colored keyhole this is called a lint lint filter now we all know towels are dried in the drying machine at high temperatures and there is friction and then heat is being taken out so this friction and rubbing leads to formation of lint we all know you know which is fluffy in nature so all that lint is sucked 
and through suction is is collected into this lint filter after every drying cycle this lint filter has to be continue necessarily cleaned up because if it's remain there it becomes a thermal barrier so lot of heat is being wasted to use to dry the items maybe double or triple also so regular and of course that being a very fire sensitive material can lead to fire hazards also so this is just one example i next slide please and of course again that's a complete science in itself properly designed wash processes contribute to sustainability improperly designed wash processes wastage of chemicals water etc we can all imagine that you know so as i said these processes have been perfected over years together and of course still a lot of research is going on to ensure that they remain sustainable next slide please automation is very important to maintain sustainability now lot of automation has taken place in a uh, in an industrialized hospital laundry i will uh, cover one very important aspect is uh, if you can move to the next uh, slide please dosing pumps now earlier we must have been very familiar that you know people would use powders even people who have been familiar with composite textile mill they must have seen that in a dyeing house or a printing house powders are taken in a mug as we use in a bathing uh, wash mug and put in the washing machine or the drying machine what or in the processing machine that was a practice till now now of course modern laundries do not use that they use this automatic dosing pumps you can see this pumps here six or seven pumps you can see blue and white uh carboys jerry cans in which chemicals are stored on the left side you can see a washing machine all these washing machines have pre sort of you know programmed uh, wash charts and they can be changed so at a particular time when bleaching is required that particular pump will get activated it will suck out exactly the right quantity of the chemical and put it inside the washing machine so no extra use of chemicals no deficit use of chemicals either this and of course it minimizes the use of water in this process also so prevention of chemicals wastage prevention of water wastage so this is in fact now 99.99% of all modern hospital or hotel laundries they have phased out powder dosing they all use liquids with automatic dosing pumps next slide please yeah now we have just come to the conclusion sustainability in laundry is a priority and we all know that uh, hospital laundries are really very high tech they use very high quality machines computer controlled and you know microprocessor uh, controlled chemicals are also very advanced very high tech chemicals state of the art machinery is used so it goes far beyond the dhobi giri so it's a complete technology and a science based activity now and lot of money is being spent even now it is being spent to modernize and update the existing laundry processes to for example i'll just cover up a few salient features and come to the close as i said finest brains are engaged in activities to ensure sustainability for example a dryer uh, if it can effectively dry at lower temperatures and in reduced amounts of time better chemicals which can work at more effective at lower temperatures reduce dosages and which require lower amounts of water we have seen in the previous slide that perchloroethylene is being gradually phased out and water environmental friendly eco friendly health friendly chemicals and technology are being developed for this solar energy is being looked at as a major supplier of heat in industrial laundries and millions of dollars are being spent on this very worthy pursuits so in a nutshell that is uh, sustainability in a hospital laundry as i said you know we could only cover the surface there is much more to it in greater depth but i hope i have been able to sort of you know uh, generate some sort of awareness that laundry industry in a hospital is also quite intensive on sustainability so with this now i conclude my presentation and throw the uh, discussion open to the house thanks once again and sorry i have exceeded the time by about 10 minutes my apologies thanks thank you thank you mr vivek kulkarni sir so thank you so much detailed thank presentation thank you very much for uh, giving us the insight on 
sustainability and hospital wanted sir oh my pleasure any time surely so if there are any question and suggestions of course i'll be happy to answer them otherwise we can move to the next the thing you know presentation i think there are no questions okay thank you thank thanks you. thanks a lot thank you thank you now i call upon dr m shashikala coordinator national hub for health care instrumentation development anna university and uh, she has uh, she is a professor in, in the department of uh, ec and also director of center for medical electronics from uh, october 2019 and uh, previously she was heading the responsibility as a deputy director student of our anna university chennai and deputy coordinator national hub for health care instrumentation development anna university and our research interest is bio signal processing medical image processing brain computer interface interface wearable systems pattern recognition biometrics artificial intelligence and machine learning in healthcare and uh, she is having a teaching experience of 23 years and, and a research experience of 20 years and uh, she has backed funded projects worth 2.16 crore and has a patent published one patent has been published and uh, participated in 36 national or international conferences and published articles in national or international journals in 32 international journals and uh, she will be presenting on sustainable medical device innovations achieving sustainability in innovations over to you ma'am very good afternoon I'm Dr. Sasikla, coordinator of uh, National Hub for Healthcare Instrumentation Development, and also professor and director for Center for Medical Electronics. So first, uh, I'll introduce about NHID and the achievements. Then I'll go to my uh, specific topic. This National Hub for Healthcare Instrumentation Development is a national facility which is established in Anna University by BST in 2011 with a funding of uh, 17.5 crores. So the need for this hub is, so we all know that 80% uh, of the medical devices are being imported and thereby the healthcare cost also increases and we are not able to provide the uh, uh, healthcare at affordable cost. And that too in our country, we know the um, population and they suffer very much to get affordable healthcare. So, um, so there is a need to develop indigenous medical devices. We have to uh, de design and develop medical devices indigenously. And so with this notion, uh, the National Hub was uh, uh, established here at the high university. So the main aim of this National Hub is to promote and accelerate indigenous development of medical devices. So uh, we take the clinician ideas because medical devices and technicians or industries we cannot take an idea and we cannot work on it. Most, most of the projects should be, the idea should come from the clinician. So we take up clinician uh, requirements and uh, we convert that into, we take that as a uh, project. And in our projects, we take up the industrial partners in the beginning itself. In the implementation of the project, we have a clinician, we have an industrial partner, and then academia, academia or the R&D organization. So we collaborate with uh, academia, research institutions, industries, hospitals, uh, funding agencies, and we formulate the problem and work on it to develop a solution and to develop medical devices. So in the process, we have developed the many uh, medical devices and the success of NHHID is we have technology transferred the product uh, and uh, we have done commercialization. So most of the innovative medical products that have been developed in the national hub, I guess now uh, it is there in the market. So we have uh, transferred our technology to the industry and we have done the commercialization. And in the process, we have developed many sophisticated uh, infrastructure uh, laboratory facilities uh, for PCB design and fabrication. 
uh, limited manufacturing facility for the data printing, medical manufacturing. And then we have uh, opera electronics and medical imaging facilities. We have a complete biotechnology facility. So all these facilities, which we have uh, developed in different departments, can be utilized by the MSMEs uh, to convert their ideas into prototypes. And these prototypes can be converted into products in the university. So these are all our uh, partnering institutions and agencies. So we collaborate with NABL, Cidesco, and AMTZ, KRHT, IMED, and MSMEs uh, through this journey. And, uh, and you can see our Pan India connections. We are collaborating with many uh, R&D institutions, IITs, IAC Bangalore, uh, and Chitra Tirunal, and all other industries throughout India. So in this journey, we have eight technologies. We have transferred to different uh, industries, the electrospirosis kit, CNC diet, synthetic milk tester, mask manning, uh, gadget for ophthalmic lesions, uh, the heme device, the sanitizer, the antibiotic device, and RFID-based uh, infant security, uh, security system. And uh, we have many prototypes which are in the pipeline for technology transfer. And uh, we have created many national facilities, which I'll be shown uh, in the later uh, slides. So these are some of our uh, products, which we have uh, uh, formulated, designed, and developed in the university in-house. And the first one is the synthetic milk tester, uh, which is now available in Amazon. Uh, the next one is the uh, leptospirosis kit and mass screening gadget for ophthalmic lesions. Um, so this can be used as a screening tool for uh, detecting the various ophthalmic lesions. And uh, this hysteroelectrical activity mapping device is to find out the fetal heart rate and uh, uterine contraction during the labor period. And also we have developed the antibiogram device to test the antibiotic susceptibility within six hours. Whereas the traditional methods takes about 48 hours. And the CMC diet is a data acquisition system, which is a robust uh, data acquisition system, which can acquire all the biosignals. And the RFID infant theft uh, prevention system is a very interesting project. And uh, the, we got the direction from the Madras High Court, Madurai High Court. Uh, it was seen that in Madurai government hospitals, uh, the infant thefts were happening very frequently. And uh, so the Madurai High Court has given Nana University uh, the direction to provide a solution. So we have provided a solution based on RFID so that RFID of the infant and the mother has to be matched. So this solution was implemented in the hospital and after uh, successful implementation, now it is being implemented in all other uh, government hospitals. And other devices are uh, external defibrillator, fluoropharm, chicken kumiyake, and telemedicine. So we have done other uh, devices also, which are in the technology transfer stage. Uh, Real-time urinometer, which will instantaneously find the, uh, the conservation of urine. For the, it is very useful for the post-operative patients and uh, the patients who have uh, kidney-related uh, issues. And low-cost sweet BEP system. Uh, this is a system which we developed in association with uh, Chandra Netralia and Appasami Associates to find the visual acuity of pre-verbal children. And then uh, web-based audio meter, instead of using a hardware system to check the threshold of hearing, we have developed the software so that uh, this software can be uh, provided in all of our uh, uh, mobile phones so that uh, we can do frequently, we can do the hearing test so that we can identify the hearing problems at an early stage. And Padma Vada, which uh, it is a, a footwear that can be used for the club foot deformity children. And our university, seeing the success of NHSID, uh, UGC has given us university with potential for excellence in biomedical electronics and instrumentation. And we received the funding of uh, 23.5 crores, where we developed this antibiogram device. Uh, wherein we converted the biotechnology concept into a uh, system, into a device. 
So this antibiogram device tests the susceptibility of the antibiotic, whether the antibiotic is susceptible or resistant to a bacteria. And this technology, I mean, in traditional methods, it takes about 48 hours to find out this. There is another method which uses imaging techniques, uh, is able to identify the antibiotic susceptibility within six hours. And the, the beauty of this device is that we have developed, uh, we have uh, designed and developed this device in house. All the mechanical subparts uh, have been uh, developed in our manufacturing uh, department. And we have made all the PCB design and the electronic system design from the EC department. And Center for Medical Electronics, we developed the outer electronics required for this as well as amazing software. And we were able to come up with this device. So we have the capability uh, to develop, to convert any prototype into product uh, in-house in, in Anna University. We have all the sophisticated laboratory facilities. Not only that, we have a limited manufacturing facility. So where MSMEs can make use of our facility and provide, uh, they can uh, uh, develop the initial branch of devices. So we have begun, uh, done this uh, uh, 20 devices uh, in-house itself. And we have a unique uh, calibration center here, uh, which we have developed with the funding of uh, three pros from BST. So we have all the major analyzers to calibrate all medical equipments in the hospitals. Uh, so over these years, we have calibrated around 14,000 equipments. So initially three years, we have done it free of cost to create some awareness among the hospitals. Now we are doing it at a, um, having some cost for this. And uh, so we were initially uh, created a market and set up a tent for this calibration. And uh, so far we have earned a revenue of 80 lakhs. Now we are going, uh, going for an ABL accreditation of this facility. So this facility can also be used by the MSMEs to calibrate their medical devices. So these are all the facilities that we have uh, in biotechnology department. We have a small molecular analytics lab. And through the UP funding, we have done this limited manufacturing facility. We have a 3D printing and additive manufacturing facilities, uh, both in manufacturing department of uh, CEG and production department of MIT. And uh, this is a PCB fabrication and assembly lab. So you cannot see all these facilities in an academic institution. So because of that, uh, UP project, we have established all these facilities. So now these facilities are open for any academic institutions or uh, even MSMEs to make use of these facilities and come up with uh, their uh, design and products. And uh, we have uh, state-of-art uh, imaging softwares uh, for uh, 3D visualization or 3D modeling. And we have a very good uh, EMI, EMC testing facility. So that can be uh, used for pre compliance testing for the MSMEs. So since all these uh, facilities are offered by an academic institution, uh, the cost will be very less because we want to do it. Uh, since we have established the facility, we wanted to extend it to other uh, organizations. And during COVID also, we have developed many technologies like uh, our textile department that they developed this uh, reusable mask and it is an Amazon also. And then we came up with the uh, AU uh, sanitizer which actually kills the RNA of the virus. Other sanitizers, uh, they do not do that. So this uh, sanitizer uh, destroys the RNA of the coronavirus. And uh, we are uh, in the stage of getting the license for that sanitizer. And uh, we have also developed IoT-based smart thermometers to find out the COVID clusters. And we have also developed, along with our AAC Bangalore, we have uh, developed many uh, respiratory-assisted devices like uh, uh, C, uh, CPAP and VPAP and oxygen concentrators and uh, ventilators. So we are interacting or having collaboration with many hospitals to do our uh, uh, validations. So CNC value, Stanley Medical College, then Medical Institute of Speech and Hearing, then uh, uh, Dhanuwas, New York Hospital and PGI Chandigarh is under hub. So we were the first southern hub uh, we were the first uh, national hub to be started by DST, and second hub is the uh, uh, PGI Chandigarh. So it is being used as a validation hub. And we can see uh, there are uh, several manufacturing clusters throughout India. In Maharashtra, you can see 
Uh, it is mainly concentrated uh, for pharmaceuticals, Maharashtra and Gujarat. Haryana for uh, low end uh, medical uh, consumables. Uh, only in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, they focus on medical electronics. Uh, Karnataka is again consumables like uh, insulin, stems, and all. Now, Tamil Nadu is identified as a uh, uh, cluster for medical electronics. So, uh, the Department of Pharma and our state government together, they are bringing out the medical technology part at Oregadam uh, in 350 acres in, uh, in Tamil Nadu. And uh, Anna University is identified as a technical and knowledge partner in establishing these uh, uh, medtech zones. So whatever facilities which we have done in Anna University, they wanted us to do that in a larger scale. So we are going to provide the scientific and technical advisor for uh, uh, establishing this medtech zone. So in a nutshell, what are the capabilities of this hub? So we will be able to convert any prototype that comes to us, laboratory prototype. We can convert that into a product. And also we can provide access to all the infrastructure and advanced technologies which we have. And we have a limited manufacturing facility. So uh, before going, because for clinical validation, these MSMEs need some set of initial batch of devices. Without that, they cannot go for validation. So for, it, uh, for developing or uh, manufacturing these initial batches, we, we can use our limited manufacturing facility uh, so that we can provide the initial batches of devices for multi-centric validation. And we have the electronic system design and PCP fabrication. So we have complete solution for PCP design, fabrication, and assembly. And uh, we can help in, with our collaborations with other hospitals. We can help the MSMEs to do uh, validation, calibration, and also certification. And with our EMI, EMC testing facility, they can do the pre-compliance testing before they go to actual uh, EMI, EMC testing, which is expensive. Because if there is any failure, again, they have to uh, pay a lot of money again to go for the uh, testing. So they can do our pre-compliance testing to find out really whether their uh, device uh, is going through the test, and then they can go to the actual and we can also help them in getting uh, regulatory approvals through Sodesco. And uh, since it is an academic institution with all these uh, infrastructure facilities and also academic expertise, we can provide training and skill them. So with this introduction, uh, So today, uh, I'll be talking about how to achieve sustainability in uh, medical device innovations. So for the past one and a half day, we have been listening about uh, sustainability in various uh, fields. So I think now you will be knowing about uh, what is sustainability. And uh, now here we are going to focus on how uh, to bring sustainability in medical device development. Why here exclusively is called as medical device innovations? Uh, because you know, there is a lot of things that has to be done to the medical field. Still uh, many clinicians are wanting out many uh, some new, uh, new uh, novel innovations. So in medical device innovations, how to bring uh, sustainability? So uh, when you bring sustainability into a medical device, so what are the advantages we are going to get? Uh, as we know very well, when uh, all this sustainability, we are going to get a cleaner and uh, greener environment. So even in, when you bring sustainability into the design of medical devices, you are going to get a better environment. Because finally, uh, when you throw out this biomedical uh, medical devices, it is again we are creating waste, biomedical waste. It is again going to, it is very disastrous to the environment. So if you if we bring sustainability in medical device, we are going to have a better uh, greener environment. And if you use this tag of that sustainability, we have considered sustainability in this development of medical device, it becomes attractive to the consumers. They, they will use this tag like it is a green solution. And uh, 
Uh, so it becomes attractive to the consumers. They try to uh, buy your products. And also there will be cost savings if we go for a biocompatible materials. So we can uh, uh, have an advantage of cutting down the cost and investor attractiveness. So again, if, a develop, uh, if an innovator tells that we have brought sustainability in the development of the device, then the investor gets attracted to it. Uh, because it, it will be a competitive advantage when compared to other products in the market, he can claim this as a uh, edge to, help to his product. And also his brand will get improved if he brings sustainability. And these are the business benefits as well as environmental uh, advantages. So how to think about sustainability, how to uh, bring sustainability in the medical device. So we have to start uh, thinking about uh, sustainability throughout the life cycle of the uh, in device development. So starting from design stage, how to bring sustainability in the design stage and also in the entire life cycle of the development of the device. And even after developing the device, we have to think about how to dispose, end of disposal and how this disposal of the medical device is going to uh, uh, create hazard to the environment. Thinking all these aspects, uh, we have to bring, bring uh, sustainability in different stages. So that is what is shown here. We have the product development cycle. So from the first one is the discovery. First from the concept, we have to design uh, the device, then develop the prototype, which should be a laboratory prototype, then convert that into product, then go for approvals. And if there is, you have to go for validation and then approval. If there is any problem, again, you review the design and do the changes. Then you go for a, a, a post-market and you have to also do safety testing and all that. So in each and every uh, step, we have to see how to introduce sustainability. How to do in each of our action, how to bring sustainability in the uh, development. So that will be our uh, major uh, aim. Uh, so uh, when we talk about sustainability, we all know we have to reduce the carbon emissions. So you can uh, see uh, what is carbon emission with respect to a medical device. So that uh, based upon the material that we choose for the design, as soon as when you dispose the device and during the transportation, during the distribution, we transport the medical device from one place to another. So that uh, transportation, uh, distribution related uh, CO2 emissions uh, is also, uh, we have to reduce that. And energy use. So uh, if we want to reduce the energy, then you have to think about uh, the battery because the battery we have to go for some rechargeable batteries or uh, uh, using energy harvesters. We can use renewable uh, sources of energy like solar energy and uh, you have thermal energies. Even the uh, heat from our human body can also be converted into energy and that can be used because most of the variables that comes now, uh, they, make, they make use of these uh, 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 renewable sources of energy. They use thermal energy and also the energy from uh, mechanical action of our human body can also be used. Say, for example, walking action. And these uh, kinetic energy can be converted into uh, energy. So energy usage also, we have to think about how to uh, optimize use the energy, whether we are going to use a bulky battery or whether we are going to go for a rechargeable battery. Now we have textile-based batteries. So much of research is going on about the energy harvesters. And then water use. Uh, how optimally we are going to make use of the uh, water? If it is a biochemical, uh, biotechnology-based instruments, and uh, what is the material waste which we are going to create uh, across the entire life cycle of the device? Because we are going to use the material in different stages. So, what is the material waste? Okay, not only the selection of the material, because even the selection has to be such that. We have to go for a greener material. Not only material selection, what is the amount of material that we are going to use? So when you uh, design a, uh, uh, what to say, miniaturized uh, equipment, even if you dispose that, it is not going to create a lot of waste. So in that aspect, how much amount of material we are going to use in uh, designing the device and uh, the material selection, as I told you, whether we are going to uh, go for a petroleum-based plastics or whether it is a uh, biocompatible material, whether we are going to make use of the material which are from the plant fibers so that it can be easily disposed. And uh, 
because for the plastics, it takes 400 years to disintegrate. So whereas within weeks, the plant fibers can uh, disintegrate and it can get absorbed. And uh, the supply chain management. So from the raw material to the complete design, how we are going to build the uh, sustainability and the manufacturing and distribution. Even in the manufacturing process, how we are going to bring sustainability as well as distribution. As I told you, uh, the transportation related uh, to distribution also creates uh, uh, hazard to the environment. So these are the questions uh, that we have to ask. So um, here, if we see, we are, uh, here these factors we have considered with respect to design, design to end of life cycle. So what are the various stages? In every stage, we are considering these uh, sustainability issues. Not only that, the sustainability issue should also be considered um, considering the end of life disposal of the device. So we have to ask these questions during our in uh, initial design itself. That is whether the device will be uh, reusable, whether it can be recyclable. Here the problem is if you are going to design your device with different materials, it, you cannot recycle it. So only if you uh, if your uh, device has only single material, it will be easy for you to recycle. So these are all the stages uh, or the questions you should get during the initial design stage itself. So is the device recyclable? So the answer is if you use only one single material, then it will be recyclable. So there itself we cut down that we should not use mixed materials. So and is it reusable? Even if it is reusable. Uh, the manufacturer should know that uh, uh, after some duration, during end of life disposal, if, it, if we give it to a manufacturer, whether it can be refurbished. Refurbished in the sense, it should go to approvals. It should get necessary approval to be uh, deployed in the fields. So without that, we cannot uh, use uh, get a uh, reusable. We cannot have it as a reusable equipment. And what steps can be uh, is taken to reduce the energy and water waste and chemical use? And what are the cost and environmental impacts associated with disposal? After doing all the design, we get the final product. And during disposal, what will be the cost that we lose and what is the environmental impact that is associated with the uh, disposal? And also I told you the medical waste is a huge and growing problem which we have and how we are going to take care of this medical waste to disposal. And distribution related uh, CO2 emissions can be minimized if we have uh, warehousing and manufacturing locations. Strategically, they are located close, then these kind of uh, uh, emissions can be avoided. So what there are six solutions to bring sustainability in medical devices. The first one is material selection. So how are we going to select the material? Uh, whether it is a plastic based material or whether it is a uh, bio based material. So, that will give you uh, one solution to sustainability, the material uh, selection. So, as I told you, there are a number of different materials we have to try to reduce so that it can be uh, reusable. Next, in the device design. So, our device uh, has to be designed such that the final device should be a compact one, it should not be a bulkier one. So we should go for nanoelectronics and lens technology based solutions because the same thing we can design the design, uh, the, the application or the final results will be the same. But how we are going to use whether we are going to use a lens based uh, sensors and electronics or nanoelectronics. So these, uh, if we are going to use lens and nano based technologies, we we'll get a, a miniaturized uh, device so these, uh, we have to consider uh, to reduce the overall dimensions or weight of the problem. Third is the manufacturing process. How we are going to manufacture uh, the device? After designing, we have to do the manufacturing. The traditional methods, they employ subtractive methods, molding and other uh, traditional methods. Nowadays, we are going for 3D printing and additive manufacturing. In 3D printing, uh, because we don't know what will be the final mold which we need or final, what will be the final look of our uh, product. So we can do 3D printing and do, in the R&D itself, we can do 3D printing and get many designs and then we can finalize the design in the R&D stage. And after doing that, for manufacturing, nowadays we are going to use additive manufacturing where the raw materials, uh, the powder will be used 
uh, it should be added. So then slowly the, uh, the raw material gets added to get the final shape of the device. So that the material waste can be uh, sub uh, sufficiently to be reduced in this uh, additive manufacturing process. So this is a manufacturing process. This is suggested to bring out sustainability and uh, packaging. So packaging materials, the materials that you use for packaging is also you are going to uh, provide a hazard to the environment because all the packaging materials will be using the plastic or petroleum based materials. So if you are going to use some biodegradable materials, uh, so these packaging materials when they are thrown out, again, uh, we can avoid uh, these problems and bring sustainability even in packaging. And then distribution. So manufacturing and warehousing locations have to be uh, close enough so that you can avoid shipping and all those uh, related uh, transportation related CO2 emissions. So uh, now we know how to bring sustainability in the medical device, starting from design to the uh, end of life cycle. In every stage, uh, we have thought how to bring the sustainability, like material selection, manufacturing process, packaging, then end of life disposal. Not only this, when we consider uh, bringing medical device sustainability, we have to balance between the device performance and bringing sustainability. Simply thinking that, I have to bring sustainability. If you start using uh, materials, we have to be uh, very sure of the device performance should not be changed. It should give the same uh, performance. And also, we have some uh, imperatives of medical devices which are very important, like safety and uh, usability, durability of the device. So we have to balance between these two, the sustainability and the uh, performance of the device. Because some change you bring in one stage of uh, device development, it will provide unintended consequences in other stages. So while bringing uh, uh, sustainability, we should also take care that we, we should not affect the device, device performance, the safety of the device, uh, the durability, and other requirements that a medical device should satisfy. So we have to uh, bring sustainability in the manufacturing process. And also, uh, we should think of uh, developing devices which have longer life cycle. So if you see some of the pulse oximeters uh, which we got during the COVID uh, period, after some time, it is not working and we're just throwing it away. So when we design uh, medical devices, we have to think of longer life cycle so that the consumer will use it for a longer lifetime. If the device has a longer lifetime, then frequent disposal will not be there. And so that uh, uh, environment can be uh, safe. So we have to avoid frequent uh, disposal. So we have to think of devices which should have longer uh, life cycle. And we have to have best uh, practices in all of the process. We have to follow environmental best practices, starting from design, manufacturing, everything. We have to follow environmental best practices so that we can promote eco-friendly behavior, and uh, we should provide recycling options as a told you. And uh, the other one is bringing healthcare home. So nowadays we have all these variables uh, growing in at a very rapid rate. And so now um, even all the geriatrics, because mostly we have elderly population at home, so they cannot have a long stay in the hospitals. And because of these variables and other uh, uh, solutions which we have, we can bring healthcare at home as well, so that they can have some telemedicine. Using telemedicine facility, they can uh, get uh, suggestions from the clinicians. All these uh, wearables, they have, um, uh, they are connected with Bluetooth, and through Wi-Fi, we can uh, transmit all the vital parameters to the clinician who is sitting at the, sitting in the hospital. They can get all these parameters, and they can monitor them instead of having them in the hospital. They can be at home. And continuous monitoring of these uh, patients can be done. So we can have this telemedicine technology. If this telemedicine technology is taken uh, in a larger way, all these kind of uh, environmental disaster can be reduced. So when we make sustainable medical devices, certain things which, which we can consider to improve sustainability, uh, one is multiplexing. So what they say is, if you go and take a single strip and do a test, okay, for every test, if you are going to have a different strips, and if you perform the test, 
uh, then the cartridges, wastage of cartridges will be more. So we can think of multiplexing it. A single cartridge, uh, if we are able to perform multiple tests, then uh, we can uh, reduce uh, the environmental, uh, we can reduce the biomedical waste. So we can think of uh, performing more than one test in a single strip. So that, that means many tests can be performed so that you can, uh, you can avoid using the uh, every uh, single test may not go for a separate cartridge. So a single cartridge you can think of having multiple tests. This is one kind of uh, thing which is called as multiplexing. The other one is, uh, as I told you, uh, we have to go for greener materials. Nowadays, um, the industries are coming up with uh, reusable plastic cartridges or uh, the cartridges which are made of natural plant fibers. So within 10 weeks, uh, we can uh, dispose this uh, cartridges which are made with natural plant fibers. So they are thinking of using renewable polyethylene, which is PR and uh, PETIS polyethylene terephthalate uh, for uh, these materials. Nowadays, these are being uh, replaced by these two PR and uh, PET. And nowadays, the manufacturers, they are also providing transparency to the consumers. They give a list of uh, what are the materials that they are being using for uh, developing that device. So they claim that now uh, UK and US have started this. So they claim that uh, these are the materials that we are, we are giving transparency. We are providing transparency to the consumer. These are the materials that we are being used in the design. So they are coming up with such kind of things to attract the investors and the consumers. And um, so in target, target packaging, as well as dropper bottles and uh, vials are also made of plastic. So we have to come up with some greener solutions. And uh, the additive manufacturing. So we can make use of extensively. We can make use of 3D printing so that they finalize the design during the R&D stage of development itself. And uh, so that we may not go for the traditional methods which use subtractive methods. Because there they create a lot of waste in materials. So we can go for the eco friendly manufacturing method, which is an additive manufacturing. And as I told you, we have to think about longer life cycle so that we can reduce the frequency at which these products are being thrown away to the environment. So that less pollution will be there. So for all this, now uh, a standard has come up IEC 6060 1 bar 9, which is an environmentally conscious design. Okay, so this is the standard which tells us uh, what are the uh, various uh, um, verification that we have to do in every stage from design to the end of life cycle. So this is the accepted international standard for the basic safety and essential performance of the medical environment. So the objective of this standard is improvement of environmental impact taking into consideration all the uh, various stages of the product's life cycle from initial specification uh, to end of life management. So they have given certain procedures in this standard, they have given certain procedures to be verified at every stage. So that now after, if your product is, uh, if you claim that your product has uh, taken sustainability in the development, then we have to, uh, we can get this standard IEC 6060. So we can standardize uh, this procedure of development. So then the final goal is we try to significantly create a greener environment. So mainly we have to reduce the emissions, CO2 emissions in the environment. So with related to medical care, if you see the generators that we use in the hospitals, they are going to provide all these emissions of CO2, the energy conversions. And all the indirect emissions will be from the gas facility that they use. And all other emissions are from the biomedical waste during the manufacturing and shipping of these uh, consumables also, uh, there are emissions. So due to these emissions, there is climate change. And if we are going to avoid all these emissions, we can mitigate the climate change, we can cut down the cost, we can reduce the air pollution, and so that we have a better uh, uh, community. So when we talk about sustainability, so we have been talking about sustainability for the past two days. So it is not about uh, sustainability, it's not about to a particular division of people. So everyone should realize that in all of our actions, 
uh, we should not affect the environment. So it is not that a single person cannot bring the change. So uh, to get a cleaner earth, every person should be uh, responsible so that uh, they should be responsible in all their activities. So this is one aspect, bringing sustainability in medical device uh, development. But in all other activities, we have to think uh, how to bring sustainability and uh, how to have a greener environment. So it is not an issue of a single person or an industry. So every individual, if we think and if, you, if we understand the problem and if we do uh, take up sustainability in all other activities, I think surely in the near future, we will get to achieve sustainability in all of our elements. Uh, I thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, thank you, madam, for the wonderful uh, presentation about sustainable healthcare system. And you have provided a lot of insights into the sustainability with respect to the applicable devices and also the healthcare system. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, question, sir, uh, question. Uh, wants to ask one question. Yes, Mr. thank you for that uh, wonderful presentation. I just wanted to only uh, ask one question since we do have a lot of innovation hubs in the country, not uh, in the medical devices space, which are supported by DBT and BST. Yes, Investors are looking for uh, sustainability quotient and green initiatives in the innovations. Uh, they are asking for uh, some kind of uh, a third party validation on the sustainability or the green elements in the innovation. I think hubs uh, have to take up this with uh, DST and DBT and then maybe request uh, uh, the government of India to come out with some kind of uh, maybe it's a rating or some kind of a validation because China has uh, uh, this kind of a, um, a program called Green Pathways Registration in Medical Devices. China has this and uh, I think uh, this is very critical because a lot of innovations are happening uh, from academia and uh, these innovations are sustainable and green initiatives. Being startups now, we cannot expect them to go for a sustainability rating or reporting yes. or an ESG, which even the large companies are uh, Kind of struggling to comply with. Uh, I think so it is a very good direction. So that, uh, I think we need to request the hubs to take up this initiative that there has to be a, a kind of a third party evaluation in our country to determine the, the sustainability and the green uh, quotient in these innovations. And then maybe we can also come up with some different kind of pathways for registration over this. Otherwise, it's going to be because startups are focusing on those innovations, but then uh, Investors from uh, angels and coming and asking, show me your uh, uh, reporting of this and that. We don't have. In fact, we were asking a couple of speakers in the morning, do we have any such guidelines? Our city has mandated guidelines for companies. Maybe I think they can come, they should comply with the standard. Uh, and maybe we have to evaluate the product, uh, whether they satisfy the standards. standards. This is what last two days of the series, and they, these are country specific, and investors coming from yes. outside the country, they will look for compliances uh, with, it, um, uh, with reference to global norms. So, country to country, the regulations are changing. Yeah. But I think uh, we have a vibrant innovation portion. Uh, we need to look at this, and because this is going to be the future criteria. and. Uh, Especially in the healthcare services and products, sustainability is going to be uh, mm, uh, upon and uh, kind of demanded from multiple directions. Maybe hub side things, since we, these are the yes, national we hubs, can take this and uh, some kind can, of a criteria. You can be a uh, certifying. Uh, Absolutely, uh, some kind of uh, national hubs can certify. National hubs can certify, validate. As you said, you know there are standards. Help other hubs to implement all this. And uh, this is needed actually. Yeah. Because if we start to say that is because there are a lot of innovations with this kind of sustainability initiatives, but who will validate all this? Yeah. That's what I just wanted to check. Thank you so much, ma'am. We, uh, we can also work in this direction and it has uh, enormous potential, and also it will help all of the MSMEs and innovators to make uh, their to get some certification on this. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Now I'm happy to welcome Ms. P. Sandhya, who is a PE in Civil and ME in Public Health and Environmental Engineering and has affiliations with FIE, the Institute of Engineers India. And the organization she has worked with is Director General Naval Projects, Bureau of Indian Standards, Kalam Institute of Health Technology, and has an experience as a designer and faculty for manual and computer aided designs for more than five years. Junior Engineering Director General Naval Project, Shaka Patam for two years. Scientist in Bureau of Indian Standards for more than 21 years. And scientist in Kalam Institute of Health Technologies in Strumas. Now we heartily welcome Sandhya Madam to on, on Sustainable Medical Device Manufacturing. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible, madam. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, respected uh, organizers, uh, eminent speakers, and uh, distinguished uh, audience. Uh, I am glad that I am with you today and making a presentation on uh, medical devices manufacturing, uh, the area with which I am uh, familiar only maybe uh, just two months. Even then, I uh, took the liberty uh, to merge my uh, previous experience in the standard formulation or the certification on environment or uh, uh, other issues, quality and environment issues, and uh, apply to the uh, medical devices manufacturing. Next, next slide, please. Yeah. See, uh, when we talk about medical devices, you know there are uh, diversified uh, uh, fields or the devices. Uh, in the entire spectrum of medical devices, starting from the surgical instruments, hospital furniture, in vitro diagnostics, uh, in vivo diagnostics, medical electronics, radiation equipment, and uh, not the least medical textiles. So, so these are all comprising of not only a simple uh, kind of medical device, but at the same time, complex medical devices like uh, MRI scanning or CT scanning, et cetera, and all. So uh, this is the diversity or the disease, the range of products uh, when we uh, try to count, they may go into the uh, uh, thousands, definitely it is more than a thousand uh, uh, number in the medical devices. And when we refer to the standards, product standards from there itself will come to know under the CDSCO uh, classification that uh, at present uh, the number that is counted by uh, regulators or the standards of, uh, formulation departments is definitely coming to more than 1000. So this is the diversified area that we are talking about. And keeping this diversity, I will be uh, applying the sustainability uh, aspects in uh, general uh, to all the uh, medical device management manufacturing uh, sector and uh, at the same time I thank the previous speaker who has already given an idea about the uh, aspects that need to be considered uh, under the context of uh, sustainability. Next slide please. So when we talk about sustainability definitely we uh, uh, connect it to the sustainability development goals and when we talk about the relevant sustainable uh, development goals to the medical devices that I feel is of SDG3 which, which talks about good health and well-being that means ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for, uh, uh, for all at all ages that is from the newborn babies to the age-old uh, category. And the next one is SDG9, which talks about industry innovation and infrastructure. Build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. So this is very much important in the case of medical devices, as you heard in the previous presentation, you know, uh, medical devices are not entirely a new uh, sector. It is actually a subset of the uh, existing se sectors, keeping the diversity in mind, you know, textiles, the subset of medical devices is the medical textiles. Similarly, surgical instruments, the subset of uh, steel uh, products or metal products is the surgical instruments. The same way, even electronic items, the scans, these are all the kind of devices. These are all the combination of uh, components that are already manufactured or being manufactured by the respective sector industries since long. And during that process, those industries have already been reached to the certain kind of innovation in the uh, device as well as in the infrastructure itself. So when we talk about innovation and infrastructure, 
uh, we say 3G, 4G and all and 5G to some extent and how the developed countries are in advance of the developing countries in, uh, in terms of the uh, fourth generation or fifth generation of the industry innovation, et cetera, and all. So SD, uh, uh, SD, SDG 12 talks about responsible consumption and production, that is ensure sustainable consumption and product and production patterns. This is what actually is the uh, area of the discussion, that is, uh, what is the demand and how much is the demand, in which direction is the demand and how much is the uh, consumption and at the same time, how much need to be produced to meet the demand. Next slide, please. So when we talk about SDG 3, good health and well-being. So uh, every uh, sustainable development goals goal is given with a certain number of set of targets. Those targets are for the governments, for the academia, for the research associations, for the industry, and also technologists, et cetera, et cetera, and all. So when we uh, go through the targets that is given by the countries to achieve either uh, at a certain time uh, uh, period, you know, by 2020 or by 2030 like that. So the targets given to the uh, countries as a whole, comprising of this uh, government, academia, industry, et cetera, and all is, if you go through one by one, it talks about various areas of the good health and well-being. Well, uh, to start with 3.1 is about global maternal mortality ratio. The 3.2 is end preventable deaths of newborns and children under five years of age. Third one talks about end the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and neglected tropical diseases and combat hepatitis. The 3.4, it talks about premature mortality from non-communicable diseases. 3.5, strengthen the prevention Otherwise, these are the targets given to the countries under the SDG 3 should be achievable by them in the time scale given to those countries. Some may be different uh, for the developing countries according to their capabilities and some may be different to the uh, developed countries. So this is the area or this is the SDG which is creating demand or the pathway, the consumption pathway or the demand pathway for the medical devices. Next slide, please. Similarly, if you see the SDG 9, which talks about industry innovation and infrastructure. So I have only highlighted the targets which are relevant to the medical device manufacturing industry. So how it can be achieved, industry innovation and infrastructure will not fall from the sky. You know, we have to develop from the grassroots how it, it can be developed. 9.1, it talks about develop quality, reliable, sustainable, and resilient, resilient infrastructure. So uh, medical device industry is somewhat, as I already mentioned, is somewhat lucky because many of the components they are taking or acquiring from the existing sector industries that they have already attained to some extent sustainability. So in that way, so when they procure or when they develop the infrastructure when they inherit the infrastructure from those existing uh, uh, sectors, definitely the sustainability aspects that they have achieved also will be transferable to the medical devices manufacturing industry also. The 9.2 talks about promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization. Yes, it is what is required and we demand SDG 9 for all the countries to promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization by empowering the local uh, people or uh, uh, the expertise that are available within the country. Increase uh, 9.3 talks about increase the access of small scale industrial and other enterprises uh, and their integration into value chain and mar markets. Exactly. That is what is needed that we have to include or accommodate the small scale industrial and other enterprises. And then only it can, it, it gives a kind of, you, you know, networking for the medical device manufacturers to serve among all the needy in a smoother and uh, simple way. 9.4 talks about upgrade infrastructure and retrofit industries to make them sustainable with increased resource use efficiency and greater adoption of clean and environmentally sound technologies and industrial processes. So these are all the targets given uh, by uh, the United Nations to the countries under this SDG 9, of which few are very much applicable for the medical devices industries to not only develop themselves, but also to obtain or inherent from the other sectors. Next slide, please. 
So this is again a continuation of the SDG 9, which talks about enhanced scientific research. Definitely it is required as my previous speakers are already talking about the research that is the role of the research in innovation or uh, uh, you see uh, for the smart devices or uh, environment friendly devices. Upgrade the technological capabilities of industrial sectors, that is the ecological hubs that we have been talking about today, providing with all the facilities and all. These are all very much required for the medical devices manufacturing uh, industries. Facilitate sustainable and resilient infrastructure development in developing countries and support domestic technology development, research and innovation in developing countries and significantly increase access to information and communications technology. This is very much now majority of the medical devices are with uh, embedded with electronic equipment or communication equipment so that even the remote uh, uh, medical practices also those can be very uh, help uh, those can be very helpful for the uh, uh, this health sector next slide please sdg 12 is responsible consumption and production so it talks about implement programs on sustainable consumption and production yes every uh, uh, see industry has to have their own program on sustainable consumption and production which talks about the whole li life cycle that is procurement of raw materials and the end of the cycle disposal again bringing that back to the cycle uh, or as an alternative raw material and uh, sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources. Of course, natural resources, the word natural will going to be uh, uh, vanished uh, very, uh, see, uh, in a very short time. So the word that will be left for us only resources or alternate resources. Achieve the environmentally sound management of chemicals and all waste throughout their life cycle. Significantly reduce their release to air, water, and soil in order to minimize their adverse impacts on human health and the environment. So, if we talk about the laboratories, wet chemical laboratories, so you can imagine yourself how much is the role of the chemicals involved in that. So, uh, innovations in the medical devices and the pathological laboratories, the devices that are used, are slowly, slowly. Uh, discouraging uh, uh, practicing this wet chemical uh, laboratory practices and they are replaced being replaced with a very innovative and smart medical devices then substantially reduce waste generation through prevention reduction recycling and reuse this is an inherent practice that every medical device industry has to adopt to reduce uh, responsible consumption and production next slide please so these are also again uh, the targets that are set for the, uh, the countries that you can uh, understand yourself from the United States website because of the time paucity. I'm just uh, passing on this slide. Next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, for sustainable sustainable medical devices and through the S SDGs, when these are when these two are interconnected, how we can achieve the sustainability? Identify the demand for sustainable medical devices, which is driven by SDG 3, that is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. So this itself is SDG 3 creating a demand for sustainable medical devices and then manufacture sustainable medical devices by embracing SDG 9 that says that build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. And the third one is ensure sustainable consumption and utilization, which can be achieved through SDG 12, which talks about ensuring sustainable consumption and production patterns. Next slide, please. So how to achieve SDGs and those targets either by the government or any uh, institution. Definitely standards can help the, all the uh, target uh, stakeholders to achieve the targets as per the uh, targets that are given for the respective SDGs. So uh, if we cursorily see uh, the standards that are available at international level and national level, for SDG3, if you see the uh, website of ISO, it says for good health, good health and well-being, there are around 3,082 ISO standards are available which can help to meet the SDG3. Definitely all these 3,000 standards, 3,000 plus standards 
comprise of standards of the existing sector, sectors like plastics or the steel or the glass or the any other metal textiles. Because as I already mentioned, medical devices sector is a subset of the existing sectors. So the standards which are available for the textiles can definitely be helpful for the medical devices sector also. So if you see standards on sterilization methods, medical devices, surgical implants and instruments, health informatics and related products among other areas of focus. The notable examples are the ISO 11137 series that is the sterilization of healthcare, either by radiation or by uh, ETF, uh, 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 this is steam sterilization or any other kind of sterilization. And ISO also help, uh, develop standards to help local governments promote health and well-being in their communities, such as International Workshop Agreement, IAF 18, Framework for Integrated Community-Based Lifelong Health and Care Services in Aged Society. So we are also growing. China is already an aged country. We are also day by day or year by year, we are also uh, entering into that area. Japan is already an aged country. So how these agreements can apply for uh, tweaking or making the modifications in the existing healthcare facilities to meet the target uh, population. ISO 37101 that is about sustainable development of communities. So these are all the uh, compendium or these are all the set of standards in together will help the industry, the medical devices industry to achieve SDG3 that is good health and well-being. Next uh, slide please. Similarly, for SDG 9, that is Industry Innovation and Infrastructure, ISO standards or website, their website says 13,000 plus standards are available to meet SDG 9. Among that, the first standard we can say ISO 44001, Collaborative Business Relations Management Systems Requirements and Framework, and 56,000 series of standards, that is Guidance Documents on Innovation Management and 50, uh, 19,600, ISO 19,600 is compliance management system and 30,400 is knowledge management system. So innovation or infrastructure, industry innovation and the, uh, is definitely depending on the knowledge transfer, collaboration, and at the same time, compliance with various set of the uh, say requirements which are uh, enforced or which are directed to the industry either through the uh, mandatory certification or the voluntary certification or the regulation. So that set of compliance is definitely that industry, the, that infrastructure definitely should meet so that the end product also in compliance with the set of requirements. So these are the set of standards definitely will help SDG 9 to achieve SDG 9 that is industry innovation and infrastructure. Next, next slide, please. For goal 12, that is responsible consumption and production, there are around 2,760 standards available for SDG 12. Among that, 20,400 is the sustainable procurement. And then another standard, important, interesting standard, I would say, is 20,245, that is cross-border trade of secondhand goods. Yes, this talks about circular economy. Uh, circular economy or uh, you can say alternate raw materials or you can say reference material, uh, sorry, uh, alternate raw materials. That means this gives the scope for reuse of the, uh, this gives the scope for reuse of the uh, existing goods or extract some of the elements or usable elements from the existing uh, products. Next slide. Please. Yeah. So as already mentioned by previous speaker, sustainable manufacturing practices includes starts from procurement of sustainable raw materials or alternate raw materials and adopting good manufacturing practices. And at the same time, uh, when we talk about the packaging materials, which are left uh, uh, at the moment we start using the product that is packaging material, the, which shall be environment friendly packaging materials and, and energy conservation throughout the life cycle of the product, especially at the use stage. So when we compare the energy consumption uh, on a product uh, at, the use at the manufacturing stage and at the use stage, definitely the use stage which uh, runs into years, the consumption at the use stage is much, much important than 
the uh, energy that is consumed at the manufacturing stage or at the other stage and all. So uh, right now there are no such uh, rating systems like BE rating system for electrical devices, you know, electronic devices uh, for energy conservation, but definitely it will be a good uh, uh, start at the beginning initiative if we, that is Bureau of Energy and Efficiency also looks at introducing energy rating system for sustain, uh, for medical devices. In that way, it will be a one check towards sustainable medical devices. And the other uh, criteria is ensuring the longest use phase of the product. So uh, when we talk about longest use, uh, we know that how electrical fan, ceiling fan, or any other devices in our home silently runs for the years together without giving any uh, complaint. The same way uh, the devices, any kind of device, uh, shall give problem-free service or maintenance-free service for the longest uh, life. That is uh, uh, the, the primary requirement for the sustainable device. Then adopting circular economy concepts in place of linear economy to reduce, reuse, and recycle medical devices. So now every country is coming up the, with the policies or the uh, directives that uh, no landfill uh, this thing and uh, the material has to be brought back to the uh, uh, reuse or the recycle this thing and should remain within that circular uh, uh, economy uh, model only. So in that way, uh, even the industry also, the manufacturing devices, manufacturers, if they are adopt this circular economy concepts, definitely the uh, devices or the byproducts or the end product will come back into the, uh, into the life cycle. Then third party certification and assessments to demonstrate commitment to sustainability. This is the most important thing that uh, any uh, medical device manufacturer has to adopt, that when they have adopt, uh, implemented the practices, again, it is the responsibility, their responsibility to the mainstream. And in the, the where uh, definitely the third party certifications and also the assessment with the accreditation bodies will give uh, an assurance, not only for the industry and even for the uh, consumer also that the practices they have adopted are actually uh, genuine in nature and uh, which can be, uh, re which, which are reliable. Next slide, please. Yeah. So when we talk about some of the standards which are exclusively targeting uh, uh, the sustain uh, medical devices, which can help for sustainable medical devices is IEC 60601-1 that Madam has already covered in. And there's an another standard is ISO 14971, which talks about application of risk management to medical devices, which helps the uh, medical device manufacturers to identify the risks associated with uh, the medical device that they have been manufacturing uh, in comparison with the, uh, the surroundings or the man material or the environment with which the medical device is interacting. So those are the elements, environmental criteria, or the uh, impact on the patient or uh, radiation. These are all the areas that can be identified. Uh, risk that is associated with the medical devices can be uh, identified by through the standard ISO 14971. Once this risk is uh, eliminated, then definitely we can say to, to some extent that the medical devices is definitely a sustainable one. Similarly, when we talk about the processes that need to be followed by uh, the customers or the consumers when the products are meant for reuse or recycling. So ISO 17664 series of standards, which talks about processing of healthcare products, information to, to be provided by the medical device manufacturer for the processing of medical devices. So how the sterilization need to be done in case it is of repetitive use, how it is to be uh, uh, properly uh, stored, how it is to be uh, put in the uh, autoclave or it, 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 it should be protected. These are the areas that, uh, that will be uh, covered or the criteria that will be that is given in the standards, this 17664 standard, so that the, at the end use, uh, at the use stage, the practices that they adopt are also of, to some extent in a sustainable manner. Next slide, please. 
so uh, when we talk about uh, the standards that are available for the medical devices as i said it's already running into the thousand uh, uh, running in thousand so the basket of iso standards for medical devices the thousand standards or thousand plus standards are developed by the number of committees at iso level iec level or when we talk about national standards at the bas level so if we see at the iso these are some of the uh, committees that i have identified but uh, down the line there may be a number of sub committees or there may be a number of panels that are uh, uh, working groups that are working against uh, a particular standard on the medical devices so as you see uh, the diversity of the uh, medical device area starting from the acoustics which is related to the sound and all then transfusion infusion and injection and blood processing equipment and the down the line you see the robotics healthcare organization management biotechnology so on and so forth and all so this is the uh, area medical devices manufacturing sector which is evolutionary in nature and day by day day by day it is growing into in the uh, in a number of directions and it is definitely a very interesting area for all the stakeholders to look into and contribute to the possible extent to make the manufacturing uh, uh, sustainable man uh, sorry medical device manufacturing uh, uh, as a uh, as a uh, sustainable medical device manufacturing uh, this thing uh, area in our country next slide please similarly these are some of the uh, committees in iec uh, so international electrotechnical commission which talks of, uh, which works on electrical equipment or uh, uh, electronic equipment so tc62 and its subcommittees are working on electrical equipment in medical practice and they have brought a number of series of standards for medical uh, safety of the medical electrical equipment uh, everyone majority of the are uh, aware of 60601 series of the standards that they have been brought out by this committee that is tc62 for safety uh, of the medical devices electrical safety and environmental safety of the uh, electrical medical devices next slide please so these are the areas or the committees that uh, bis bureau of indian standard has been working for development of indian standards for uh, medical devices including the uh, hospital sector also next slide please this is uh, from my side and uh, i think i have integrated the medical devices manufacturing with the sustainable development goals and also the standards of the tools that can contribute in achieving the sustainability in the medical devices manufacturing thank you thank you very much sandhya madam for the uh, wonderful presentation and the uh, insight given on the uh, Sustainable medical device manufacturing. Thank you. Thank you.